Hi guys, welcome. Today I bring you my Hyrox Glasgow 2024 video. Uh, this is my second time at Hyrox Glasgow and my ninth time through the Hyrox Mangle. I wasn't going to go to Hyrox Glasgow. Uh, I went last year and it was such a colossal drive. Um, I wasn't going to go again. Uh, but I find myself now booked in for another one. So why? And of course there is a story behind this particular outing. Now, some of you might have watched some of my other videos, uh, but last year, early last year, I bought my wife, Holly, a surprise trifecta, right? A Spartan trifecta, like 25 miles of OCR over a weekend, right? I'm such a romantic guy. Um, and she, she flat out said no, uh, but I convinced her and she reluctantly we went and we had a great time. Now, not having learnt my lesson from that particular outing, uh, she equally said she didn't want to do a Hyrox event ever. So, like any good husband, I bought her a ticket to Hyrox Mixed Doubles with myself, um, and reluctantly she went again, and she smashed it. And we had a great time. Can you see there's a pattern emerging? So, I should not have been remotely surprised when I opened my Christmas presents that same year to find that there was a ticket for Hyrox Glasgow Pro Division. Yeah, that's right, Pro Division. Uh oh. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> <laughs> I'd always planned to do one, but I always had a few excuses as to why I'd never took that step. One, I never uh, achieved the times I wanted it in opens. Um, there, Typically later in the day, I quite like to get home and have something to eat that evening. I like to get mine done earlier in the day. Um, so she secretly, knowing that High Rocks Glasgow was the only event I wasn't planning on buying a ticket for myself, she bought one for me. She also bought me the hotel and all of that sort of stuff. So here we are. Uh, though I'm going to have the last laugh because essentially she's now committed herself to a 10 hour round trip in the car with me. So three, two, one, ta -da! So I am going into Hyrox Glasgow with a bit of an open mind. I can't set many time expectations on myself because I've never done this type of event before. A lot of this video is going to be focusing on the, the step up from opens to pro. Uh, a lot of guys and girls do this at some point or another and it is a sort of an eye opener. It's, it's a gear change uh, in everything that is involved in, in the day. They say that there is uh, somewhere between a 5 and a 10 minute difference between your best opens time and your best pro time. Uh, I don't know if this is true, obviously that, that there's a lot of variables in that. I think it's important I go into this one with the mindset that I'm going to set a time. Uh, not that I'm going to try to get a particular time, I'm just going to set that base. Uh, with that base time, I then can come back at a subsequent event and attempt to beat it. I always like this doing better, trying to get better. It's, it's, it's worked for me in the past. I, I set my own time, I come back, I beat that time. Hi everybody, I am here in Glasgow after five and a half hours in the car and all sorts of weather, we finally made it. Now today's Friday, tomorrow is Saturday and it's the first day of Hyrox Glasgow. Uh, and in that day, all the men go, men doubles and there's some mixed doubles in the morning. Uh, but my wave, the men's pro, is going late in the evening. Uh, uh, mine is 20 to 9 at night, uh, which is alien to me. Uh, one of the reasons why I've never done pro up until now. Um, I'm a bit sort of anxious about it, I'm a bit worried because obviously the extra weight, um, but ultimately all I can do is go into it and give it my very best. The long drive up has given me plenty of chance to think about how I'm going to handle it. Now, one of the things that I've been thinking about is the first half of my race has always been a, a bit hasty, right? I'm always quick out of the blocks, I can't help it, the adrenaline, the event, it just makes you want to run. Um, I'm normally sort of first to the skis and first to the sleds. Um, but I think that's where I often go wrong. It wrecks my mid-race and I'm, I'm battered by the end. Uh, I, I often do okay, but I think that's probably where my, the problems all start. So knowing that I've got extra heavy sleds to deal with in stations two and three, I am thinking about deliberately going slower for runs one, two and three. 
um, and then evaluating when I get to sort of burpees or the end of burpees, see how I'm feeling. I've always got the opportunity to then pick it up mid-race if I'm feeling okay and toward the end sort of accelerate on. Um, but this is pro weight, all of, all of the, at least five of the exercises have um, additional weight on them to the open, so accelerating is probably a strong word. So that's the rough plan. Um, it will, because I've never done this before, I don't really know how I'm gonna handle it. Um, I just have to take it with a pinch of salt and whatever happens on the day, happens on the day. Like I said in the intro, this is about setting a time, not chasing a time. Uh, whatever I achieve tomorrow, I will hope to beat at a future event sometime. Okay, so we pick up this video with me in the warm-up area. Now, in every high rocks, there is a warm-up area. It has all the various bits of kit that you actually find inside of a high rocks arena. There's also additional bits of kit in there, including bikes and skipper ropes, etc. Now, this is on the start line. The guy bouncing up and down, his name is Ricky. He is doing a non-adaptive run with a blade. Uh, so he's obviously an amputee. Uh, we're going to keep an eye out him because he features in the video a little bit down the line. He's always worth pointing out because he is a legend. Um, right, so first run, uh, we are out. Uh, everything looks sprite and fast. Um, like I said at the beginning uh, in the introduction, I was intending run one, two and three to be slow. So I deliberately kept them reserved. So first uh, into sort of station one, uh, you can see all the boys sort of lining up there. Uh, and this was another one that I was trying to curb. Uh, I didn't want to be doing 145, 150. I wanted to be doing 1552. Uh, as, just as a preserving sort of mechanism for the next exercise, which was the sled, something that I'd been anxious and apprehensive about. So I was deliberately sort of holding back a little bit so I could come out of there not completely tanked. So uh, out into run two, uh, as you can see all the sort of racing line that's going on around that sort of dog leg. Uh, now we are into the sled push. Remember, this is 202 kilograms. Um, fun fact, that's the entire weight of my family. Myself, my wife Holly, my daughter Isabel, my son Charlie, my dog Nala is all on that sled. The first run of this sled was actually really okay. It didn't feel too bad. But what you don't realize when you get to the end, how much energy you've spent doing that push, it's only made obvious when you then go to push it back. So about three quarters of the way back, um, at about 24 meters, um, I was starting to feel that sort of lactic acid build up, the sort of inability to breathe. It consumed all the oxygen already in your body. So um, the idea of pushing it another 25 meters at this point, it was not a fun thought um, and I was struggling. Uh, I tried various ways of pushing it, including this rather unique way of putting my head on, on the weights. Um, yeah, wasn't particularly uh, efficient doing that, so sort of went back to my normal short-handed pull, push, um, like that. Um, I, looking at myself now in video, I can quite clearly tell that I'm, I'm pushing too high up the poles, I need to get lower, push it more like a rugby scrum. I know, I know, I know. Um, so yeah, so uh, the return trip was a bit stop start and I did lose a bit of time doing it. A little bit of time hands on hips, sort of breathing into the sky as you do. But as you look down the road, there's lots of guys struggling. Uh, and that's because 202 kilos is really pissing heavy. It is, it's really heavy. It's like pushing a car with no wheels. Um, so uh, yeah, finally got that done and sort of lumbered out of there, sort of ran out as best I could. Uh, legs were heavily compromised, heavily compromised. So um, try not to dilly-dally too much in the rock zone, but a, a bit of dilly-dally did happen. Um, so out onto uh, run three, uh, into sled pull. Um, 
Now, again, so this is 152 kilos. It's the same weight as the, the push in opens. Um, and what I was noticing, like I have noticed over the last few High Rocks events, is the rope is really elastic, elastic if that makes sense. It stretches as you pull it, um, which means the progress feels like it's less. I, I tried to offset this by really sort of get creeping to the front of the box and leaning over and pulling. Um, I was mostly doing the uh, lean back and walk back, but I don't like doing it that way. In the opens, I can do arm over arm. I, I just couldn't do that in this, it was too heavy. So it was a combination of walking it back and then yanking it when there was too much rope in my box because I, I wasn't going to go on my bottom d just walking over the, all the rope. R r general rope fuckery is, is a pain in the butt. Um, as you can see, Rick is there on the left. Um, he is doing a sterling job. Um, he must be getting some great purchase on that blade. Look at him go, hero. Um, and then we're, we're all sort of um, roughly the same sort of uh, position on the sleds at this point. Um, last few pulls. It was nice to sort of keep up with them on this particular one. But it was tough. It was really tough. Um, it's surprising, su surprisingly um, hard to breathe as well. You can see everyone is sort of out, out of breath. Um, and that's this particular station done. Thank goodness. And just like that, my sleds were over. But the, a combination of the sled push and a sled pull had left me in quite a um, knackered state. Um, um, and I, you know, I was, I was, I was feeling it at this point. So yeah, uh, the idea of going into burpees at this point, um, yeah, terrible, <laughs> absolutely terrible. Uh, so this is run uh, four into burpees. Uh, remember that you have to go in the in arch before you can uh, travel through the rock zone into the, the exercise station. The in arches were always the big yellow ones with the word in on them and the, the black with the word out on um, at the other end. Right, so you always have to start with your hands behind the lines uh, and then sort of burpee over. I think the guy next to me got pulled back for not doing it properly. Uh, now, I have improved my technique on these. Um, however, um, the problem is when you're, you go into bur doing burpees uh, and your heart rate is already really high, like 160, 165, you can only sustain them for a, a short amount of time before it completely incapacitates you and you have to consume more oxygen to carry on and that's that's why you find that at certain points blokes just stop dead in the middle of doing these um, Ricky um, blade guy he is I noticed he was making lots of ground on me um, and he disappeared around the corner and I never seen him again <laughs> um, so yeah that, that he did an absolute brilliant race um, but yeah well done Ricky mate um, I couldn't keep up with you, mate. Uh, as you can tell, that was um, just awful for me. Hated it. So, um, as my face suggests, I'm disgusted by that particular exercise. So, um, into exercise five, which is the row. Uh, we've just passed Mike there. He's the head judge of, uh, of the rowers, and he spent all day, both days, judging. Um, so, respect where respect's due. Um, now, on this particular exercise, I... Uh, was not in any rush. Uh, I think I started to slip below 2, 205. Uh, I think I even saw 210 at one point, which is just dreadfully slow. Um, but I was so oxygen deprived that I didn't really have much else to give at this point. But um, that was over and done with quite quickly, just over four minutes, whatever. And it was, you know, you're out again. Uh, like I said, um, you, you can easily go too hard on rows and the next one be dreadful. Um, I think most of my runs were quite consistent actually in the end. I'm looking at my times, they're all just below five minute Ks, um, which is surprising. <laughs> uh, so, Farmer's Carry, station six. This is one of those stations that I really enjoy normally and I can normally do it in one go. Um, but with the 32 kilo kettlebell, 64 total, uh, over 200 meters, it wasn't gonna happen. So I put them down at 100 meters for a quick, for a quick break uh, and then at about 75, at then at about 90 uh, because you know it, it they're really heavy um, and it really make it really feels like you're pulling your arms out of their sockets uh, as you can see sort of it, it in the sort of the guys behind me they're all having to put theirs down as well um, and look at them all they're all massive butch beefcakes of men so I don't beat myself up too much <laughs> um, 
yeah so this is uh, 200 meters and this is the last the last bit here I think this is the last 25 and uh, the head judge of that one was Gary Rothwell he yeah he, he shouted loads of great support at me throughout the the day as I passed through sort of those last few stations um, and then into station seven the lunges now the first half of the lunges weren't too bad. I was able to do the two-step quite consistently all the way to the end. But the second half of these were just awful. I could feel kind of the blood rushing out my face, uh, which is kind of a precursor to passing out. Uh, luckily, I didn't. Um, and got through it in the end. As I sort of, uh, as I got to, like, toward the exit, maybe in the last 15 meters, sweat was getting in my eyes and I couldn't really deal with it. Um, so I did sort of the last 15 meters sort of with one eye shut, both eyes shut, uh, which was a bit weird, but it meant I didn't have to drop the bag. Um, so this is now going into uh, the last run, uh, the very last run uh, ahead of the wall balls. So this is the wall ball arch and it brings you into a whole different part of the arena. Uh, where they've set up this sort of massive Thunderdome grandstand thing and these are all the sort of the blue marshals and uh, the guy in the beard he claimed me for his own um, and we started doing these things now it started off quite well I did 20 in a row and then the, the next the next few clusters were tens uh, but they eventually started to degrade certainly when I started to get a few no reps and my tens became nines or eights and things like that and I eventually just had to bit and bob them through to the end. Um, it was devastating, I'm not going to lie, um, these were really gruelling uh, and on more than one occasion I had to hold myself uh, up right with that post but that's okay. I suspect if I didn't have a post I would have been fine. <laughs> so this is Justine, she was the head judge on this particular station, um, another excellent head judge uh, who does just wonderful work, she worked both days as well. Um, on this station, even when it got super busy, you know, she, she just was a legend. Now back to me holding this post up, it really needed holding. Uh, um, I think I was about 75 uh, wall balls in at this point, uh, on my last legs, literally on my last legs. Um, so it was very much a case of sort of grinding these last few out. Um, my uh, marshal there, my referee, um, he was whispering sweet nothings in my ear, really encouraging words of, uh, support. Um, I always take my hats off to the sort of the the uh, volunteers. They do such a great job. Um, and this is my last couple of reps now. This is the last one, and I am done. And running, 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 tensing every muscle in my body for the photo, and then immediately collapsing. Now you'll note my name doesn't come up on that board. Uh, and that's because I'd noticed prior to this that my name wasn't coming up on the, the board on the running track either. Uh, but this was fixed really quickly by a guy in the, uh, in the recovery area. So uh, thanks to you, dude. So just last night, I competed in High Rocks Pro here in Glasgow. Uh, and it was a, a fantastic event, but it was tough really tough all the additional weights um really do add another dynamic they really do bog you down and devastate your sort of legs um impacted my ability to run um straight away so uh, essentially hemorrhage time but i'm gonna do a, a full breakdown of that when i get back home i just want to talk briefly about what happened after the event right so um af after i finished it was about 10 p.m or thereabouts um you, you do your general recovery area stuff and you do a bit of talking and getting changed and ready to go, right? And then we left the SEC, SEC uh, and went sort of down the, the corridor toward the doors. And there's a bar there. I thought, yeah, I'm going to go get myself a pint as a you know, celebration. It's clearly still open. Loads of people in there drinking and eating, whatever. So I went to go in and the guy went, no, nah, mate, I'm, we're closed. Apparently, I, I, I was one minute late. Uh, I think there's probably a lesson in there about dragging your feet in the rock zone somewhere. Uh, and then I came back to the hotel where I'm at now um, to be surrounded by world champion athletes who are here in Glasgow competing this weekend. So a bit of imposter syndrome when I've got an athlete's patch on my backpack. Um, and then um, we were on the table next to Paul Sinner from the chase. Interesting. He was pissed. What a fantastic weekend at Glasgow that was. 
I'm going to talk really quickly about how the day went for me and my performance and then I'm going to talk a bit more broadly about the event um, and just tie a nice little bow around this little adventure I've just been on. So first the, the results, I got a 126, right? That's not overly fast, that is far from being at the top of the pile. Um, I came about halfway down my sort of age group um, and but that's by design I, I didn't go out to this one to go as fast as humanly possible um, I only had about a month since my last event um, I only got bought this ticket I was only made aware of this ticket at Christmas time so I with knowing that knowing that I didn't really have the preparation behind me I went into this one with sort of an open mind um, to simply experience what it was like at pro weight now I always knew it was going to be tough but I didn't really anticipate it being as tough as it was. Um, I, tried, I tried my best to come up with a plan where I would conserve energy early on um, and then be sort of fresher in, in the sleds, right? I always knew the sleds would be, would be a make or break kind of thing for me. Um, and so that's what I did. I ran slower on my first run. I took, the, took my time on the ski. I, I took my time on the second run ran straight into sleds and it was like it, it literally was like hitting a brick wall the first the first couple of passes the first 25 meters on the sled push uh, was fine uh, but I knew at that point when I got back that another 25 meters was going to be tough and it was it was stop start after that so will I be doing pro again and will I be coming back to beat this time uh, yes, absolutely. I would love another chance at doing High Rocks Pro and I'm absolutely sure that I can smash this time right out of the park. Uh, I think if I brought uh, the sort of the whole session earlier in the day, I think uh, because I do not get on well with training in the evening, I think if I did it in the, earlier in the day, I would save minutes there. In addition with some designated prep for the pro weights, uh, a little bit of work on threshold, uh, leg strength and sort of um, anaerobic work. I do think it is very manageable to take five minutes clean off of that time, if not more. So uh, one of the events in next season will almost definitely be a High Rocks Pro. Uh, I just need to figure out which one at this point in time. Um, so uh, let's now talk a little bit about the event itself, High Rocks Glasgow. Is it any good? Is it worth going? Uh, I'm going to cut straight to the uh, the bottom of that one. Yes, it's absolutely worth going. The SEC is an amazing venue. The vibe there was incredible. The volunteers and the staff were helpful from the check-in person to the person that fixed my times on the board. Every single stage that I encountered was really good. Now, one of the characteristics, let's say, of High Rocks Glasgow is the running track. Uh, it's a rectangle, but it has a dog's leg on it. It adds six additional corners. Uh, it adds a sort of vibe of a Formula One track in the terms of how you sort of steer around these corners. Uh, it does create a, a bit of a racing line situation. So people are cutting the corners left, right and centre. Now, in massive groups of people, a, a mixed ability, some fast, some slow, of course, this creates a bit of argy-bargy. And that was going, clearly going on throughout the day. Uh, it's, it's not OK to push people. Um, it's not OK to get mad at people in your way. So just be courteous at these kind of events the fast lane slow lane mechanism that is present at all the other events simply doesn't work in this kind of goofy shaped running track so um yeah that was very obvious the other thing that was worth noting that because the exercise zone in total was smaller things like the farmers carry lanes were narrower and overtaking was much more difficult uh, you could not fit two people side by side holding kettlebells so it in instances and overtakes, people had to sort of turn sideways to pass. Um, what else? The separate room for the war balls and the Thunderdome. That was great. Um, it was nice that it was separated, opening the extra hall, making the extra space, took away a lot of the criticisms from last year's Glasgow event. Um, and it was flipping amazing running in there uh, to the sort of the layers and layers of crowds either side on the Thunderdome. Yeah, and, and doing the war balls in, in the finale uh, is always bittersweet. It was really tough with the nine kilo ball, I'm not going to lie. I managed to sort of grind 20 out at, at the start, a few a few sets of tens and everything else was bits and bobs of five or seven or nine. <laughs> um, but running over, over the finish line was absolutely amazing. It was such an amazing feeling to finish a pro event 
uh, after doing eight Hyroxes in different flavors up until this point, this was the very first time that I have managed to earn myself uh, a yellow patch. So uh, that is gonna go um, front and center on my backpack um, in future events. Can we be very proud of that? So um, what's next? In Hyrox terms, uh, I've got the last one of the season coming up, um, London Olympia. Now I'm going into this one with James in pro doubles, right? So it's exactly what I've just done at Glasgow, uh, but we get to take it in turns with the exercises. Hopefully that will allow me to have a little bit more fun. Okay, uh, I just want to take this opportunity to thank all of the judges and volunteers that made this event possible, right? You guys are all awesome. It was difficult at times. You could see that from sort of spectating that you had quite a job on your hands, but it was brilliant. Thank you very much. Uh, I think I should probably say thank you to Holly, my wife, uh, who bought me this ticket for Christmas. Uh, thank you. Uh, it was great. Um, she has also told me that not to buy her any more surprise uh, entries to events, um, but I don't think I can keep that promise. I didn't promise. <laughs> so uh, you never know, Holly might pop up in future events soon. Um, a few other thank yous. Thank you to the people that supported me around the track. Uh, thank you to Holly's mum that looked after the kids. And thank you to X Endurance, the company that keep me in supplements. Uh, go check them out. So if you interested in how I get on in uh, doubles pro please give it a channel and subscribe now um, for the rest of you uh, I will see you guys soon thank you for watching Mart out